Hi there, welcome back to my shop. I have three bowls here that I did quite a few years ago when I first started getting into segmented turning. And they all have the same problem. They have a crack in the bottom. They've all separated over the years because of humidity and temperature. And I haven't picked them up for years, so I didn't realize that it happened. Now this was before I started using the floating disc. And it's the reason I started using the floating disc. Some others had done that rather quickly after being put together. And so I got away from trying to do the solid segmented bases because in this area there is a great deal of fluctuation in temperature and humidity. So I'm going to take these over to the lathe, take off the bottom, the base, and replace them with floating discs. So I'll take this one, which I call my hot air balloon vessel, <laughs> you will never guess why, and I'll show you how I do that. I will also do that on these two, but after all, you don't need to see all of them done. I'm a little disappointed in these because I went to the trouble of putting the Paduke ring inside and then a, a ring in it as well. I'm not going to do that with the floating disc, but hopefully they'll look a lot better than they do now. So I hope you'll stick with me. Let's go over to the lathe. Five hundred RPM in reverse using my sanding board, one hundred grit. All right, that's nice and flat across there. Now I just need to prepare the floating disc. All right, the outside of the base measures, and I don't measure from the corner, I measure from the one inch, because if this gets rounded somehow, then it's gonna be inaccurate. So going from the one inch, it gives us five and three eighths of an inch total diameter. Now if I take the bottom of this piece that I'm doing, and I measure from the center on this side, to the center on this side, it's the same as measuring from the outside here, all right, come back here, to the inside 
on this side. And that measures, let's go from the four inch over, four and nine sixteenths of an inch. I gotta do a little math here, which is gonna give me a headache. But five and three eighths minus four and nine sixteenths, that's the same as five and six sixteenths, or four and twenty-two sixteenths minus four and nine sixteenths gives me thirteen sixteenths of an inch. And if I split that in half, I end up with thirteen thirty seconds. So if I go from the outside, thirteen thirty seconds, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen should be right there. Now let's see what happens. I draw this circle. <laughs> now, that gives me, now it's closer to four and a half, but that's all right. I'm going to want to slowly end up at that measurement anyway. So now I can take this off and I'm going to make my recess for the floating disc. I have sanded this to 400 grit, which has pretty much removed all the finish, although I'm sure there are some below the surface. So I'm not going to bother with sanding sealer. I don't think I need it. Now, after all these years, I can't be sure what I used for a finish, although I believe it was Minwax Wipe on Poly for the most part in those days. So I'm going to use Minwax Wipe on Poly again. And I keep it in these stop-loss bags now. I find that if I leave it in the metal cans, I just get a lot of dried finish around the lid, and that wants to get into the finish when I put it on the piece, and it's just a pain. 
So I keep it in these now. It works very well. I do recommend them. I get mine from Lee Valley Tools, but I'm sure they're available in a lot of places. So I'm going to apply this using a paper towel. And I won't subject you to watching all of this. Depending how this works out, I will probably use axe abrasive paste and polishing paste afterwards. I really like them. And I didn't know about them at the time that I did this. In fact, I don't think they were around. So I'll do a few coats of this and then I will be back. Oh, that is so nice and smooth. All right, time for the polishing paste. 